We are talking with Kevin Acklin, independent candidate for mayor at his campaign headquarters on the south side. Kevin, welcome. Thanks, Brent. Thanks for being here today. Thank you for being Appreciate here. Yeah. Um, one of the first questions that I want I to ask... I usually sit in front of a flag. Yeah, I'm sure so, that you do. So, yeah. It's all over your house, I'm sure. <laughs> Along with the wallpaper. The wallpaper, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the first sets of questions that I want to ask have to do with some of the hesitations sure. that some people may feel about your candidacy, yeah. uh, specifically... Democrats, uh, self-identified liberals, progressive th progressives, things of this nature. Yeah. Um, there's been a lot of chatter about that, and it has, hasn't exactly subsided. Mm -hmm. um, let's start with the challenge of uh, Doc Harris. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, is the, I, I know that the challenge came from another source, is, but then again, there was a, you, you did some media that morning concerning the challenge. Is it fair to say that the challenge came from your campaign? A group of our supporters put together the challenge. And, and let's be clear, uh, Brian, when I mm -hmm. entered this race, we're running this race to win. I feel very strongly that Pittsburgh uh, needs stronger leadership in the mayor's office. And, you know, from our perspective, um, you know, we had, uh, we took a look at the signatures. Uh, you know, they were sloppy. And by the way, mm -hmm. I'm sure that Doc and, and Luke looked at our signatures. And, mm -hmm. and if they had a challenge, I'm sure they would have brought it. Mm -hmm. uh, for us, uh, you know, the decision was made that uh, a person living outside the city of Pittsburgh can circulate inside the city of Pittsburgh. We were surprised by that. If the judge had ruled differently on that issue, we'd have a two-man race right now. But uh, we do have a three-man race. Uh, we are, whether or not we had a two-man race or a three-man race, uh, mm -hmm. we are continuing to uh, execute our plan and, and, you know, being out in the neighborhoods to talk about my vision for this city. Uh, so we, you know, we're, we're continuing what we've been doing. Uh, I heard there was a, a discrepancy on that. Now, the, there was the Upper St. Clair person, not Upper St. Clair, um, what was the neighborhood that the person came from? Who, uh, somewhere, yeah, outside somewhere outside. Somewhere outside. That, yeah, that yeah. accounted for about 400 signatures. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I heard a discrepancy as far as the remainder of the signatures that were challenged. Were, were they all looked at and disqualified, or were they just put into a pool where they could have been potentially... Disqualified. Well, the ones that, that I think the challenge that was made by our supporters, uh, they were bad. They were bad mm -hmm. signatures. We had a lot of signatures from outside the city, um, you know, various, mm -hmm. you know, unregistered and the like. Uh, what we did as a campaign is we went door to door. We went to registered voters. We filed with over 4,000 signatures. And, you know, again, back to my point that if, if we had a bad set of petitions, and I, I'm quite sure that uh, the mayor or Doc Harris mm -hmm. would, have, would have challenged ours. What about this issue of challenging, you know, Chris versus Christopher or, you know, people, you, you know, just using slightly different versions of their name. Did you, did you challenge a bunch of those? There were um, some challenges. Yeah. Again, it, you know, the, the, the law is set up as it is. There's a process there. Mm -hmm. um, the bulk of the bad signatures were, were bad signatures. And I think there was an agreement between the lawyers. Uh, but again, you know, we're, we're beyond that as a campaign. I've yet to hear anybody at the doors mm -hmm. uh, talking about this. And, and we've been out there. Um, continuing what we've been doing. But one last question on sure. it. it. It did seem to alienate you from certain um, uh, uh, sectors of the population who associate vote challenges with it, you know, it's, it's an undemocratic method. You know, right. people, people went out of their way to sign and, you know, someone came along and said, oh, well, we're going to get real picky as far as a person's name and as far as whether they write PGH or Pittsburgh. And our support, it, yeah, I, I hear where you're going. Yeah. Our, our supporters would not have challenged if we didn't believe uh, that there was a basis to do so. And on top of that, yeah. uh, Barack Obama in the past, as I understand, has, has made challenges yeah. as well. Uh, it, it's part of the, the process. Uh, again, we're running a campaign to win. Um, if, if they weren't challengeable, then, then uh, you know, our supporters wouldn't have done that. Yeah. So, so and I, and I, I think that's been a little over, overblown. I mean, we have yet to hear... Uh, from voters themselves. We're continuing our plan to knock doors. Mm -hmm. uh, we've even spoken to some of the Harris folks since. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're, we're running, going to run a, a race mm -hmm. about the future of the city, and, and that's why I entered this race. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's what we're going to be talking okay. about. Do you have any response directly to uh, Chris Ivey, who uh, you know, took, to, took some umbrage at his vote being challenged, I think he took to Facebook and called uh, Bush Cheney tactics, and well, that, and, and then yeah, he admitted yeah. he didn't know you before yeah. then. So if you, well, if you had any response for him, Chris had done, and, mm -hmm. and I'd ask for support this this fall. I mean, I, I'm somebody who wants to have a mayor that's in the neighborhoods when the cameras aren't rolling. Uh, I know that he's done a lot of good work over in East Liberty. 
Uh, so, uh, Chris, if you're watching, I, I'd ask for your support. Check us out. I'd love to get together for coffee or a beer uh, oh. following uh, President Obama's uh, Another beer summit? Am That's I right. That'd be to? fantastic. Okay. So. <laughs> uh, Kevin, why... You've been asked this before, but I want, I'd, I'd like to hear a, a, another explanation. Why did you change your registration from Republican to Independent? Well, I think, uh, you know, Bram, first got to look at where I come from. I, I come from a, a family of predominantly Democrats in the city. I grew up in Oakland. Mm -hmm. uh, I was from a machine Democratic family. My grandfather mm -hmm. was a battalion chief, uh, was on the committee, and had worked uh, to elect candidates uh, going back to the 50s uh, until he passed in the 80s. Um, so when I came of age, I saw sort of the backside of politics in terms of uh, how machine democratic politics work in the city. I grew up in a machine democratic family. Uh, machine politics didn't work then, and it doesn't work now. Um, for me, when I came of political age, you know, I sort of reacted against that, registered as a Republican when I was 18. Uh, over the years, though, Graham, I found that uh, the Republican Party, in particular in Pennsylvania, was about, drawn, it was about drawing lines in the sand. Uh, every election, there was a line that was drawn. Uh, it came to the point where I found myself on the other side of that line. Uh, and it was clearest to me uh, when I stood up in front of county council back in January, uh, as a Republican still, mm -hmm. uh, to argue in favor of the uh, anti-discrimination bill extending protections to gays and lesbians mm -hmm. in this county. I met with Amanda Green, congratulating her on her great work. Had I been elected to county mm -hmm. council, I would have supported and co-sponsored that bill. That came, that. Um, appearance before county council came a while after the registration switch, didn't it? No, that was before. I, when, I, I, when I stood in front of county council, I was a Republican. And you'd be surprised about the backlash that I got from people within the party uh, calling me an embarrassment, uh, calling me immoral. Um, that for me... I this, is, this is for having switched or for having... Uh, no, for having stood for having, up and, okay. and, 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 against discrimination. Okay. Very basic things that I've long held. Uh, you know, I've been uh, a supporter of uh, GLBT issues for a long time uh, as a Republican. And, and again, there were lines that were drawn and they continue to be drawn. I'm now on the other side of that line. And so, um, you know, I decided to switch uh, to be an independent. Um, you know, that's, that's where I've, I've been. Uh, I've always been more of an independent thinker. And, uh, you know, in this kind of race I'm putting together this fall, I don't care if you're a Democrat, I don't care if you're a Republican. This race is not about political parties. It's about Pittsburgh, and it's about the neighborhoods, and it's about having a mayor that is passionate for helping this city realize its full potential. And well, what, what do you, would you have to say for someone who, okay, let's say that's a, a big issue for them, whether it's a local election or a national election. Yeah. You know, they, they feel passionately about that. This is the kind and of race where, you know, if you have a concern about who I am, uh, give us a call at the campaign right. office. You know, uh, I'm, I'm sort of trying to facilitate that, that communication but, but right now. Yeah, and, and I just wanted to make specific mention of um, how someone can make sense of um, your support for GLBT issues, yeah. um, recently out, outspoken support for it. And um, on the one hand, some contributions in the past yeah. to some typical or far-right Republicans. Right. There was a significant Santorum contribution. And then looking at contributions you've been receiving for this race, I know that one that gets discussed a lot is one from Family PAC, mm -hmm. which has supported Rick Santorum in the past. It's uh, 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 driven by a person, uh, I believe his name is, is Donahoe or Donahue. Well, it's the Donahue family. Do yeah, the Donahue who, who, family. Or, or, or uh, you know, Central Catholic family, who I have a lot of respect for. Uh, again, these are, when you're, when you're, when you're building a coalition uh, to give Pittsburgh the leadership it deserves, uh, it's a big boat. And you have people, uh, the issues that divide us nationally. Uh, I'll tell you right now that if you lined up the issues uh, that, that focus on the city of Pittsburgh, you, you're going to agree with the Donahue family. You're going you, you're to want uh, somebody in there who's, who's a good government candidate. Uh, this is the kind of coalition we need, Bram, to break the machine. And we can't keep shooting at each other in terms of, you know, we may disagree nationally on some issues. Uh, we may, you know, they may have supported some other national candidates that we disagree with. But when it comes to this city, you know, we can put the top 10 issues on the table. And I'll tell you that my supporters, whether they be liberal, liberal Democrats, and we have a ton, independents and Republicans, you know, we all agree on those issues. And, and that's what I'm trying to do is to keep a coalition together to win this election. That's what my race is about. I'm not putting my name out there to run for another seat, uh, whether it be city council or something else. 
Uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing this to, to give Pittsburgh the leadership it deserves.